Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for spending time with me today on Interviews. I'm very excited to be introducing you to Michelle Immelmann. Michelle, please, can you tell us a little bit more about your business and why you started it? Right. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you very much for the invite. And thank you for the time. And thank you to the viewers. And uh, welcome to all the entrepreneurs and welcome to the people out there working so hard at making it happen. Um, I'd just like to encourage you all to, to just go for it, do your best. And um, even the folks that are pivoting, there's a lot of this happening at the moment. I'm seeing some incredibly exciting, innovative ideas coming out of all of this pivoting. Uh, people that have been in an industry for so long at my age, you know, and now all of a sudden taking on something completely different. And yet, even through the, the lockdown period, have actually made quite a bit of a breakthrough. So there is, there is really, this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to, 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 to take on the platforms that are, that, are put, uh, that are at our disposal and run with them. So good luck to everybody and I'll tell you my story. But I run a travel company called Curious Journeys. I'm on my own. Um, we, we specialize, I specialize in putting tours together to my specialization is India, Nepal. Um, I'm starting Myanmar as well. And I do, I do offer some tours to Vietnam. Um, the reason why I'm so, I, I do India is because I have, I've, I've traveled it for so many, so many years. And when I, 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 why my business is not very old. I think we've been, I've been going for two years and I stopped working in a, a structured environment with a structured salary and a structured income base for that I, that I had been enjoying for a very long time. And when I stopped that, I thought my biggest fear was you're never going to travel again because you're not going to have money. And then I decided, no, 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 this can't happen. No, no, we're going to change this. So I started this business and, um, and now I'm sharing a land I love with clients, with travelers that become friends and stay, the groups that I take become friends within themselves and they stay together for, you know, this communication going on around and everything. And um, so this, this is where I'm at, at this stage. Um, we, at the moment, I've specialized, as I said, in India, but what I'm doing is I have a very specific tour, two very specific tours for next year to India. One of them is a textile tour where we, where we um, explore the region in Rajasthan called Jaipur. Um, I think, Melanie, you could be familiar with that area, but it's incredibly well known for block printing, hand block printing, and of course, textile weaving. Um, we'll be exploring that. There are some magnificent um, museums. There's wonderful workshops. There are villages, fantastic little villages that one can visit to see everything in action. There will be hands-on workshops as well. And then we're going to head off to an area on the western side of India called Gujarat. It's not a very well um, trodden area yet by tourists. Um, it will get there. And a while, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to get there before it becomes too well trodden by tourists. And the, the specialization there is also block printing. So this is pretty much a block printing and, and cotton weaving um, tour. Then I also have something called a sacred sites tour where we visit in India, um, certain areas where we go to, we'll visit Muslim areas, we'll visit a Buddhist area, we'll visit a Hindu area. There's a lot of Christian um, churches and things all over, dotted all over India. So one gets that element of the spirituality as well. You'll see Jainism and all, uh, it, it's a, it promises to In, I think it is middle of March, 
2021, we have a very fantastic opportunity to go and visit the sac certain sacred sites of India. As you know, India is a spiritual land and there are so many, so many destinations that one can visit to experience the real sacredness of, of, of the place. And I have chosen a couple of destinations for us to go to that are interesting to give us a, a, a feel of the sacredness and the history of the spirituality and understand spiritual spiritualness of India, if that's if that's a word that I could use. Um, that is a 15 day tour and it runs in mid March 2021. By the grace, may we may we be going on that one. If not, I will be I will be presenting that or I'll be running it later on in in probably October next 2021. India has two, uh, two seasons, at least one season. It runs from October to March. The rest of the year, you really can't travel there unless, of course, you're in the mountains and it's cooler. But on the plains, it's it's impossible. So if we don't go in March, we will definitely go later in the year. Then I have another fantastic tour that um, that's a very exciting. That's running in April, and that goes to Nepal. A wonderful, wonderful destination. I was there for the first time last year in December, and I went to go and do a recce. It's it's just a magnificent country. Nepal is India on Prozac. It's just completely quieter. It's the same, but it's much quieter and and much more palatable and wonderful in its in its wonderful quietness. And it's still very cultural and and um, has you know it's not as rushed and noisy because India is a complete and utter um, it, it just looks at your senses all the all your senses so um, that's that's basically what curious journeys is about mm -hmm. and what curious journeys offers we do also have on our website tours or trips that people can take on their own um, there's a whole lot of stuff that I've put together and you can just go onto the website and, and choose if there's a booking form and there's a booking system and it's it's very simple um that's that's where my business is so michelle do you go on these tours with the groups on the what i call a group tour yes i do i go as the host although in in india the when it comes to actually doing the 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 not the hosting but the actual tour guiding you have to use a local person which is the right thing to do mm. so I basically go with the folk to to just to introduce India to them and also just as the hostess to see that you know everybody's not taking water from the wrong taps or whatever have you and um, just showing India as as I love it and as I know it and with that, we have tour guides that, that, that do take us to specific places. Okay. What is your favorite part of India? What is the thing that lights you up about, about the okay. country? My favorite part, I'd say, is, well, I love the South. Although the, the, the whole tourist industry is so geared up for wanting to see the North, Rajasthan and, and a very colorful area. But my passion is the South. I love the the culture of the South. It's it's very um, palm tree and green and really, 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 uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, backwaters and it's just absolutely wonderful. And also, there are very many beautiful Hindu temples in the South. It's very Hindu and it's very, very, very a cultural still and and. Um, it hasn't come out of its oldness yet. Mm. Where the north is, you know, there's mixed mixed cultures, but um, and it's sort of very get up for tourism. So it's easier for a tourist. But the south is just, it's just magical, absolutely magical. And then I I absolutely adore the Himalaya. I love hanging, you know, play, going around in 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 the in the villages in the rural villages in the Himalaya and trekking and walking and, and enjoying those areas so much. They, it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. What, what are the challenges that you experience when traveling through India? The, the challenges are the shock, the, the culture shock. Is, um, it's, it's, 
it really is quite um, challenging. I remember the first time that I got off an aeroplane when I was a young girl, a young woman, uh, 20 years ago or whatever. And I rem first of all, the airport was, no, it was not an airport. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it was on the dress and it was, wow, where is the suitcase? Oh, here comes the suitcase flying through the air kind of stuff, you know. And, um, oh, that was the time of the spine flu one. I, I remember everybody, we, our temperatures, oh my goodness, our temperatures were being taken. And if you had just the slightest cough, you were pulled into a room and you were checked and monitored and and I remember standing in a queue and all these people were coughing on me and I thought, well, I'm absolutely going to die in this country. <laughs> <laughs> I got through that and when I got out of the airport, you know, out of the door of the airport building into this, wow, color and people and mayhem, absolute mayhem, I completely fell in love. It is just it's just a, 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 a circus, yet it's an orderly circus. It looks as though, it looks as though it's absolute chaos. No, 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 it's completely orderly chaos. Everybody knows what everybody should be doing. If everybody has a position, believe me. But um, yeah, and that's, 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 I remember that so, so vividly. And I think that is a, that is a big challenge. The other big challenges, of course, are the, 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 you know, the, to keep yourself healthy. Um, it's to eat at the right places, to eat the, to, not to eat it, wrong food, um, to know, to know, to look after yourself. And then the, another challenge is the, is that I always say in India, it's one day travel, two days rest. <laughs> it doesn't work out that way, but I feel one day, one day on the streets, <laughs> two days rest to come right because there's so much coming at you all the time. Um, it's it's noise. It's noise. It's incredible noise, and it's you see visions that you that you're not used to as a Westerner. You're just not used to those kind of visions coming at you. You know, elephants down the street and, or air camels and you know things like that. We're not used to that, and um, but the challenges the the wonderment outweigh the challenges completely that um i i know for a fact i'm just one of millions of people that cannot stop going back and I'm, i feel that i feel like that about nepal as well i went there in december as i said and um i just feel i've got to go back there i don't know what it is i don't know what draws me i cannot explain it I, but it, it draws me all the time i've been treated with complete and utter respect and kindness i've been so well treated i was you know last time the last time i was in india i was i went to a temple and um there was monkeys and a monkey bit my leg and i i was rushed through <laughs> it does it sounds as though i was rushed but i was rushed through the traffic in a car to a local doctor that immediately um, looked after me. I immediately was given um, anti-rabies and I was sent back to my accommodation and told I was not allowed to walk around for two days or whatever, but um, everything there is kind. The eyes, the people's eyes are kind. Um, life is kind. And it's harsh, but it's kind. There's an incredible dichotomy. There's a, there's a, you know, the polarization is huge and I, that also exhausts one's mind. And um, but but it's it's absolutely wonderful. Your your passion for the country really shines through. It, it should. <laughs> it should. <laughs> I do I do love it, and I do I do try and get people to love it as well, which they do. They do. It's so, exciting. So because block printing is a personal passion of mine, I'd yeah. I'd like you to talk about more about that. Okay, so. The little bit that I know, now what I'm not, is a textile expert. But the bit that I've seen is, you know, the tools, you would, you would go into a little village and you know they make these little blocks, they, they take cedar wood and then they carve patterns onto the little blocks, okay. 
Now those patterns have come through the, those are family secrets, unless of course you, you design your own, and, but the ones that are existing are family secrets. And they, and they, they belong to that particular tribe or that family. And then um, the, the weaving of the cotton, the weaving of the fabric, that, all, that in itself has got such a huge history that, um, as you know, the, that's, that is something that actually India's history is built on, is textile. It's, mm. it's, its existence is all about textile. Mm. So Gandhi, you know, it, it was very important for him, for the folks, you know, don't go and buy, you don't have to go and buy any cloth anywhere else. You weave your own cloth. Mm. You make yourself sustainable in your own country. And every, most households have got a, 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 a loom that, and they weave and they weave the most amazing cottons and then these lot these huge um runs of a table like three four five no maybe six meters long you know a, a, a long sari at the long largest sari for instance is six meters a smaller sari is three meters but you have these six meter tables and the block printing is fascinating they take that little block and they mix their dyes, I think madder and indigo and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know the terms and I'm not that, I'll tell you after April. Mm. I'll be able to tell you a lot, but um, it's it's hand, hand pressed onto that fabric. That pattern is hand pressed onto that fabric and it's vegetable dye. It's phenomenal, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fabric. Mm. And um, it's expensive at the end of the day well, it's expensive, not for us, but it's, it's an expense, it can be expensive. And I think that many people are making Westerners are making business, you know, taking on this business. And um, yeah, they, they're the ones that are that are making the good money, mm. the locals are, are, are surviving. Mm. And um, it's a fascinating process to watch. I love it. I absolutely love it. Mm. Now, I went into a local store. Uh, last year that uh, buys uh, garments in India and then brings them to South Africa to sell. And the lady there was saying that the textile industries in India are shrinking because many of the youth don't want to go into these very labor intensive processes that their, their forefathers have always used to make a living. They'd rather go into IT or something like that. Are you noticing that there is a re like, like a reduction in that kind of culture when you go back and visit again and again? There certainly is. I'll tell you what. The thing about India is education first. Um, so you in the villages, the the folk work extremely hard, and the <clears throat> their main focus, other than getting their children married off well, is the education of the of, of the child. So the, the, the youth are exposed to huge education. They, and, and the education um, is highly competitive to get into these universities and things. You know, there are, there are so many people and they have to work very, very hard. So they're highly skilled. The brain power in India is huge. It's huge. And, and you are quite right. So you've got the girls who make wonderful, I don't know how, how it is, but Indian women make magnificent engineers. So they do a lot of engineering. The men are extremely, and women as well, they're very, very IT focused. Um, and you are, you are very right that the, the craft industry is shrinking in that the, 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 the youngsters are moving away. Mm. But what I have noticed, a lot of my, my my colleagues in India and a lot of my partner companies are, and we've been through going through lots of courses and things in these last couple of months. And there is a huge um, uh, uh, plan at foot to place emphasis on the the industry, the arts and culture industry, the arts and craft industry, which includes textile, because that is what India is about. So mm -hmm. they're working very hard to bring those girls back, those women back. And it, and it is an industry that is run by women. They're running it very well. And there's a lot of NGOs that are involved as well. But there's, there isn't that much money, you know, to, to in it. 
Um, that's why the youngsters, I think, are heading off towards the cities, working in call centers and whatever have you. Um, mm. But I, I, I pray that that it does not die out. And, I, and, mm. and do know that there is still a lot going on. Mm. Mm, mm. That there is, there, there, is a, there is a lot still going on. Mm, mm. And it's up to people like us to fund it, you know, to go and visit them, to, 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 to attend their workshops and things if we're that passionate about it. Mm, mm. Absolutely. So, Michelle, if anybody wants to speak to you about doing a tour with you, how can they get hold of you? I will um, let you know my website is curiousjourneys.co.za I'm info at curiousjourneys.co.za on email. That's simple as that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Curiousjourneys.co.za is the website. Info at curiousjourneys.co.za is the email. Okay. Thank you so much, Michelle, for that incredibly interesting window into what oh. you do. Um, I, I want to go with you in your suitcase one of these days soon. <laughs> if we ever get there. <laughs> we'll get there next year. But Melanie, thank you. And I, I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And best, best of luck with everything. Thank you. It was lovely meeting you. Thank, thank you, folks. Thanks a lot.